My name is Rick Fogel, uh, co-owner at Sugarbush Supplies. Uh, today we're going to brick an arch. I've done a, quite a few over the years and gotten pretty good at it, so I thought I'd show you some of the tricks to, to help you along if you do your own. We've uh, gathered the tools that I'll use today to, to brick an arch. Uh, traditionally, we used a full brick and arch in the arch, which is two and a half inches. A more modern way to do it is use a, is a FBX 1900 degree board with a split brick in front, which comes out to about the same thickness. Today, we are gonna do the, the board with a split brick in it. Got tools to cut the board with ruler, square, and then later we'll bond a few bricks in with the refractory cement. The bricks will be cut with a diamond saw that's over here. Okay, I've determined that this is going to be a raised flue evaporator. With a drop flue evaporator we would board and brick it here. For the raised flue evaporator we put a baffle in that comes with your arch. We've got the second one that overlaps here, the right hand side, they're labeled. And now I'm going to go ahead and bolt this in and tighten them. We use a brick rail that, that we make to make the bricking a little easier. I feel it's more stable because normally they would brick all the way to the floor and you get rid of a lot of that instability in the side. Brick rail's placed, I put the web out, place that in there, and then we'll put the grates in, which the grates. Um, you want to make sure you put these in right side up. This area here is going to fill with ashes to help cool the grate. And then you've got good clearance here underneath for the ashes to fall out. If you put them on upside down, the ashes will wedge and your grates will stretch and grow and bend. It's important when you put the grates in, in an arch that you have clearance on the ends because this grate is going to heat up and grow so you've got to have a half to three-eighths of an inch here. This is a two by four arch so I'm going to do a treatment here where I use an angle iron to hold the bricks here because it's hard to brick it without them setting on the grates. Okay this is a board. Uh, this is a ceramic fiber with a binder in it. Uh, it's fairly easy to cut with just a razor knife. I have a little trick where I, all I do is set the board on here. Creates a line that I can cut along. Make sure you get a razor knife other than a utility knife because you've got to cut through an inch of material and a ra just a standard razor knife won't do it. This one has an extendable blade. It's kind of hard to see my line, but I want to have just less than where it made the little indentation in it. I actually have a bent piece of plywood here. It gives it a clearance that it's a trick I've learned. came 
out pretty good. Then I use a brick. You've got rivets here that you need to set it into, so I just use a brick to set it in like that. Okay, now we're gonna put in the, uh, oh, an extra piece of angle, I call it, it's a brick rail. That's gonna sit in here like this. And that supports our board and, and brick. Because of the two by four arch, the grates come out this far, it's hard to brick this one without that rail it's gonna end up being held. And I've cheated here a little bit. I've got a pattern that I use that I'll show you how to make it that holds that in place. And now we're gonna add board to this surface. I'm just gonna take my knife and score it here. Then I'll use my square to cut that, and I've got my angle established here. So these boards are a foot wide, so they're gonna, two of them's gonna fill the, fill the arch with just a little bit of clearance on each side, which is fine. So now I'm going to put the back side of this on. I've got eight and a half inches to the short side. So I set this to the short side, eight and a half inches, and mark it with your ruler. Makes it real easy to mark it. I'm going to cut that off at 90. And I'm using the cutoff from that vertical piece in the front there. use this piece here it's, it's easy it doesn't matter if you've got joints in it here and it makes this easy set that in there fits like a glove now we can cap these basically you can do a site like this Makes us a little cap there. Hopefully this one's big enough. It is. Another trick you can use if you are off a little bit, you can use a brick to sand it a little bit. 
to bring in nice. This doesn't have to be real accurate because you're going to get a good layer of split bricks over the top of it. Okay, now we've got to fill in the two sides. In the backs, I just put, put split bricks because your heat's pretty much gone away at that point, so you don't need the board there. Just measure down here and you kind of guess where it should go. You got 20 and a half. By 10 and 3 quarter. And this this little arch is pretty tight, so it's a little harder to come up with your stuff. It's just trial and fit. It doesn't matter if there's um, you know, a little bit of air here because you're going to get it bricked good. You can actually take some slivers and fill in there. There again, I'll use my brick to kind of form it into those bolts and rivets and you get a nice tight fit. Got to add a little triangle here and actually I'll make another one of these because it should fit the same on the other side. Does it matter which side out the board goes? No. Um, I try to get it so they all look the same, but once in a while you cut one upside down, it doesn't matter. It's just in the manufacturer and one has a little texture to it. Three and five eighths. Replicate that on the other side. Okay, now we've completed the boarding process. We can start uh, dry fitting the bricks. The saw I'm going to use is a bricks, a wet brick saw with a 14 inch blade, diamond blade. It's really convenient. Um, you can do it probably with a tile saw. It takes a, I mean, it takes a few more cuts. This one here, I can cut a full four and a half inches. I put my brick in horizontal and then I split the joints. So I'll start with a full brick, then I'll then I'll saw one in half. That offsets your joints here and gives you more stability so that they can grip each other. 
So I'm gonna cut some half now. So when I do cuts like this, I've had a pattern for my last brick. So I've traced it and what I do here is I just visually set the brick on the table. Do a visual here and I can cut that. These here look a little dangerous when I do them, but I just hold this up here and there again do a visual to cut these cuts here. And I'll just go in with a saw. The saw comes down and, and just cuts it like butter. Okay, so I've got the custom cut brick here that's going to hold this angle iron brick rail up. Push that in there and place this brick in there and I want a good eighth of an inch to a quarter here of clearance for my mortar. Then I'm going to start with a split up here. Another full brick. Full length brick split. I'm going to leave that gap there. These here, I, I stand these up first. That locks them in behind this brick. So here we've got to cut a brick that fills this. I've left my gap back here. So the first thing I do is establish an angle. Use my ruler. And that's going to need to go out there about two and three quarters. So I put a mark here. Okay, started on this wall. I've left my mortar gap, so I need some four inch, two four inches there. And then I'm also going to cut at this point. This brick's going to sit on here. I'm going to leave this full faced on the front. So I set that brick there, and that's going to give me the length of those. So first I'll cut the two four inch, actually I'll cut three four inch because I've got to make one here. And then I'll set up a jig to cut these so they all come out nice the same. So we've 
bricked over the baffle, down the back of the baffle. I'm reusing some bricks that had the angle cut that cut out of here. And then I'm just going to fill this in and cut the two side walls, which are going to take about three and a triangular brick. We've uh, I've pretty much finished cutting the brick, dry fit fitting them. Now I'm going to give you some tips on mortaring. Um, the ones that I do here, I do this and block them in and you take them home and mortar them at home because we don't want to crack the joints in transportation. This one here, I'm going to give you a demo on how I would, after you got it home, you would level the arch, get established where you want it set and level it. And then you can take the bricks out. I'm going to, I'm going to mark them and then take them and lay them on the table here because the first brick we put in is down here in the bottom. So I just take a marker and go like this. Try to get all bricks. Make a little puzzle out of it. Then I'm just going to take them carefully and set them over here. Got a bucket to mix the refractory cement in. And this is a dry type. So I'm going to mix up uh, probably just a couple of scoops of it because it sets up kind of fast. So you just mix small batches and work along. want to get this to the consistency of a thin frosting because we're going to take the brick and we're going to dip the edge that contact in it. We don't use a trowel. Okay, the first brick that goes in uh, only contacts on one end, so I just, and that, you just want to butter it up so it looks like that. All you're doing is taking a, you're, you're getting rid of the gap. You end up with no mortar joint, so I just tunk that like that. Next brick. That's a nice consistency there, it's just got a little whisker on it. Okay, we'll get our next brick, it's just going to contact on the bottom. And I, I did cut one, I didn't, not sure I showed it earlier, but this goes along the face there, so I just need a little right there. And get that tucked in there before it gets too late. Next brick. Do the edge and the end. See, I did those two edges. And this is going to contact that face brick, so a little there, a little there. I'm 
How's my puzzle coming out? Looks good. When I cut these, I left some gap here. You always want clearance here because these bricks will grow. So you ought to have an eighth or a quarter inch there. You can stuff a uh, rail gasket in or when you lay your rail gasket on, it's two inches wide. Make sure it hangs over here to protect the heat from getting on this metal. I'm gonna have to go recut that brick. It's a little tight. I gained as I came up. So that's how I do it. After you get done, I like it to dry a little bit and then all I do is scrape your joints off like that. If you get one that missing a little, you can tuck some uh, It's not as pretty when you do that, but you want this to not freeze. it'll it'll bond a lot better if you... Uh, do this in non-freezing weather. If, if it is cooler out and you're heat, temporarily heating the sugar house, um, one trick I use is take a piece of plywood, lay over the top of it and put a light bulb or a, even a lantern or something like that in it to, to slowly cure it over a couple days. It doesn't have to go real fast. And that'll give you a good, a good bond on your refractory cement. Okay, we've got a used arch here that came back in uh, that was bricked and, and I just wanted to explain the importance of getting clearance on the end of the grates. When, when, I, when I or you brick it, you should get a piece of double, triple wall cardboard or a piece of lath and place it right behind the grates so that this brick isn't tight to the end of the grate. When this grate gets temperature in it, it grows in length. And it has to have clearance to do that. So that's, if by putting that in there, when you originally brick it, and this arch has stayed good, then the grates are still good and straight because of that. Another, this shows how the grates get ashes in the top. They're cleaned out now, but to cool them and that's the proper side up for it. The other thing that shows here is is the clearance along the top edge where I, where I didn't cut the bricks real tight and he's tucked some some rail gasket in there and this you know this brick moves but you can't get it out. It's lost its bond but you can tuck some more rail gasket material ceramic fiber in there. Use of soldiers on the back, standing on end. But this had four or five years service, it's still in pretty good shape. <laughs>